Paul interviewed me. And Brandon asked me a question that took me back a little. He said, Will you, would you accept the gay community? And I was sort of shocked that he would even have to ask. I thought, how could you call yourself a unity minister or any kind of a Christian minister or otherwise? If you didn't, how could you leave one group of people out? As a matter of fact, Unity has a little booklet called Unity Leaves No One Out. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. And we all have the feminine, masculine qualities in all of us. So of course we honor both the feminine and the masculine in all of us. And we can all dare to express our true, authentic self. So self-acceptance, a lot of it is about self-acceptance, <coughs> begins with knowing that you are an idea <coughs> in divine mind. Excuse me, I have frogs in my throat today. They just hopped in there. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, you are an idea in divine mind. And we are all divine by nature. We come from love. We are made of love particles, the glue that holds us all together. But the world sees through fear and separation, calls people other, where divine love sees the world through the one presence, the one power, expressing in so many different ways, manifesting in and through each of us. Now there's, I heard this week, there's a new movement in this country for a new civil war to divide the country into two countries. Like we need more separation, right? Like the first Civil War wasn't bad enough. I mean, I'm from the North, Michael's from the South. Where are we going to live? <laughs> Did we go to California? I don't know. Christians ask, what would Jesus do? Obviously, some people don't read his teachings and his view of any kind of judgment. When he was tested and the Pharisees brought to him the woman, who in their law needed to be stoned, and they asked him what they should do with her. The law says she should be stoned, and what did he say? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Shut them all up. Now the only real sin, of course, sin is simply missing the mark. It's an old archery term, you miss the mark of perfection. We've all missed the mark. But the only real sin, if there is such a word, is the belief that we're separate that there is someone out there that is other than me. And that leads to fear. And that leads to judgment and guilt. And then we start projecting it on each other. That's why Michael and I collect gnomes in our household. We have gnomes all over the yard. If we lose our socks, we can blame the gnomes. <laughs> we don't have to blame each other. We blame the gnomes. <coughs> My dad used to say, <coughs> What goes around come around, comes around. Did your dad used to say that? What goes around comes around. Judgment is like a boomerang. You throw it out there and it comes right back at you. And that's why Jesus said, judge not or you will be judged. And he lived by the law of love. But we live in judgment 24-7. We never seem to be able to get out of judgment. I mean, when the alarm clock rings in the morning, do you say, good morning, God? Or, good God, it's morning. <laughs> when you drink your coffee, do you worry about, is it good for me or is it bad for me? Either one is a judgment. When you go to your refrigerator, do you say, well, ice cream tastes good, it must be good for you. Kale tastes bad, it must be bad for you. Either one is a judgment. And when you see something, do you judge by appearances of people or things? Do you like it or dislike it? Is it good or bad? When you hear something new, is it suspicious and strange because it's different? Or interesting, something new to ponder? When you feel pain, does that mean it's bad? When you feel pleasure, does that mean it's good? It could go either way. It's all about judgment. And the Course in Miracles reminds us the strain of constant judgment is exhausting. It's exhausting to live in judgment 24-7. So if you're comfortable, repeat with me. I could choose peace instead of this. Together? I could I choose, choose peace, peace instead, instead of this. And of course, we have to clarify the word discernment with judgment. 
<coughs> every action has a consequence, everything we do has a consequence, so we have to discern our choices, which would be a better choice for me, but judgment implies right or wrong, good or bad, and judgment almost always implies rejection. Nobody can measure up to any kind of judgment. In John 7, 24, we're told, don't judge by outer appearances, judge by right judgment. But what's right judgment? Well, any inner wisdom from the divine rather than human perception is right judgment. The Course in Miracle Commentary says, remember how many times you thought you knew all the facts you needed for judgment and how wrong you were. Is there anyone who has not had that experience? Would you know how many times you merely thought you were right without realizing you were wrong? Altogether now, oops, isn't that embarrassing, oops. Why would you choose such an arbitrary basis for decision making? Wisdom is not judgment, it's the relinquishment of judgment. Repeat once again, I could choose peace instead of this together. I can choose peace instead of this. For those who are familiar with The Course in Miracles, Helen and Bill, who helped put it together, said no one has any idea of the tremendous release and deep peace that comes from meeting yourself and your brothers totally without judgment. And when Bill finally made his transition to the other side, he had found that peace the week before. He said, you know, I've finally forgiven anyone. I do not live at all in judgment anymore. Everything just is. Not condoning, but choosing to see it differently without judgment. Repeat with me one more time. I could choose peace instead of this together. I could choose peace instead of this. Now that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. I always say it, just because I don't judge you doesn't mean we have to do lunch. <laughs> you know? If there are toxic people that destroy your energy and bring you down, you can discern that you don't have to do lunch or hang out with them. But you don't have to judge them. Discernment is different from judging. And we never know what the divine plan is for others. The bum we see on the street may be a saint here to teach you not to judge. He may be working out something, strengthening something, expanding his or her consciousness. A psychiatrist by the name of Dr. Fred Moss once said, street people that have lost everything are totally free to self-express. And we might resent that, that we can't dance and sing in the street without restraint, or rant and rave without restraint. Don't you envy that a little bit sometimes? I wish I could go out there someday and rant and rave for a while. Oh, would I have fun. <laughs> I have fun. <laughs> but my favorite story about not judging anyone, or the past that another chooses, is a bird poop story. And I've changed the word. The original story had the word S-H-I-T in it. And for church, I use the word poop. It probably doesn't matter. I like the word poop, OK? Everybody. Did you get your little child? There's a book out called Everybody Poops. But the, the story goes on to say that there's a plan for all of us. And there's a design and a purpose for each one of us. And all you have to do is look at nature. A bird flies somewhere, picks up a seed, poops the seed out, and a plant grows. Bird's got a job, poop's got a job, the seed's got a job, and you've got a job. And none of us are here to judge another's purpose. Remember that this week. From flying to picking up seeds to pooping and planting to growing, and expressing who you really are. So how do we stop judgment? <clears throat> well, when you catch yourself, I apologize, please don't judge me this morning for the frog I had. When you catch yourself, just say what? I could choose peace instead of this. Together, I could choose peace instead of this. Well, Charles, 
to Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, talked about judgment. He called it a bugaboo in scripture. He said the translators of the authorized version of the American Standard Version of the New Testament, God, there must be thousands of versions. You just pick the one you want for what you want to say, right? They're responsible for the great judgment day bugaboo. In every instance where judgment was mentioned by Jesus, he said in a day of judgment, but the translators, translators changed a to the, making the time of judgment appear a definite point in the future, always in the future, so we don't have to do it now, right? But the last judgment day is when humankind stops judging and let's go of all judgment. God is only love. God does not judge. God is only love. And we are a part of God. Therefore, we are love without judgment. The Course of Miracles reminds us the final judgment on the world contains no condemnation, for it sees the world as truly forgiven. So I'm going to be like Brandon now. Do you hear an amen? Amen. One more time. Do amen. I hear an amen? <laughs> Then let's take this within into prayer. That place in us that skips in and out of judgment at times. Help, I've fallen into judgment and I can't get up. Well, we can get up. We pray it up. We lift up our consciousness by releasing and letting go and allowing the world to be what it is and everyone in it to be who we are. I could choose peace instead of this. It's as simple as that. And as challenging as that, in this moment, right now, whatever judgment you may be holding about anything or anyone in the world in general, choose peace now and allow everything to be. And allow that divine love to flow in and through it all, lifting it to a higher expression of grace and light. In the nature of the Christ, we pray. Amen.